forget one more thing. So we're going to do Jika Q&A Part 3. And uh, the one thing that's coming to my mind that people keep sending inquiries about is the infamous mini-amp. <laughs> Jika mini-amp. What is it? What does it do? And what does it have to do with you? Ah, the mini-amp. Yeah, I never really answer that question on these videos, but, I know, I, but I'll something. answer it now. If you think you're going to buy that thing and, 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 and have an imitation of this, you're not. It's not that. Okay? It's, it'll, it will never do that. Okay? What does it do? That's the first thing. I'm trying to remember what it does because it's been so long and I never built a single one of them. I didn't build those. That's, that's another story. Okay? That thing... That was I, a business deal gone wrong. Yeah, I believe I designed that thing to plug into a vintage style Marshall and sort of cut the tone controls way back on that Marshall to get a low volume sound and use it as a host amp. And then this mini amp, it had a power tube in it and a power transformer, so it had all that interaction in Class A, single-ended Class A, to impart that into the Marshall, but erase all the crap out of the Marshall by cutting the tone controls back and keeping the volume at a, at a reasonable level. Okay, and it, and it needed to be a pretty good Marshall too. You know, I'm, I'm so not, it wasn't going to take a crap Marshall and make it sound like a Jika amp, or just or or somebody's copy of a Marshall that's all nasty and and grungy sounding and stuff, you know, it, it, I don't think it was for that, but, but what, I, but the, more importantly than that, when I tell you I never, I made two of those, okay, and they didn't look like the ones you see on the market, all right, I made one for myself and one for somebody else, okay, and then that person started producing those, and I basically, so it was your design, yeah, I basically never got paid for for any anything about that box. I never got a penny. And you never touched a, a computer until the time when you then discovered they were being no, sold. No, that's another subject that's very important after that. Okay, so so um, so a lot of my friends own them because my name's on it and they sound good. And a lot of my friends don't just own my amps; they own Marshalls. Or that, I got. Didn't you mod some of them, though? A lot of those guys own my old Marshalls and my old boxes and stuff, too, you know. And and they swear that that thing sounds, that they love that thing, you know. Uh, but they had to modify it because he, he screwed up a certain part of the circuit. And he sold, I don't know how many he sold. I wish I did know, but I don't know. I think I but, saw serial numbers up to, like, 48. all my friends call me, and I show them how to modify it and put it the way it was supposed to be. Um, it's basically one resistor needs to be put in there, and a couple of wires need to be moved. But and it's important too because it really makes the thing work right. But um, so you know, so I have no hard feelings if you buy one. I don't care. I, I'll even help you modify it. I you know, doesn't matter to me. It's built like a tank. It's really sturdy, and so on and so forth. You know, I have one here myself. I, I haven't plugged it in in a million years. But um, but the other thing that um, that will pretty much wrap this up. Because it's gone three parts now. This is part three. But this is a good Q and A because you know I just sit back here and build these amps and people really don't know who I am. But the guys from the old days do, but a lot of these younger kids don't. Um, so we we hear all the time how I'm like a recluse in the amp business and I don't. What don't I do, Michelle? I don't promote. You don't, you don't my advertise business. and promote your business. Um, what's that word that's... Some guy wrote a really nice article about me, but he only knew what he elusive. knew. Elusive. No, he um, said elusive and, and uh, enigmatic. Enigmatic. Was, enigmatic. You're going to have to even tell me what that word means. but Enigma. Okay, well... Something people don't understand. Yeah. That, <laughs> I guess. That, and, and I get a kick out of all that, right? Because... Because... Let me put it to you this way. And it's going to shock a lot of you kids. I didn't touch a button on a computer till I was about 42 or 43 years old. Okay, I didn't even know what it was for. All right, and then when I did get one, I used it for QuickBooks for my for my car business. Okay, so I, I don't you know I don't know why everybody's a master builder now because <laughs> they copy a Marshall or a Dumble or whatever they do, and they're all on the computer and they spend more time selling themselves to you on a computer. And so when people find out about me and they read about me and all the people I work with and stuff, I go, well, how come that guy ain't out there, you know, promoting his business and... How come blah, I never blah, heard blah, of blah. him? 
and and how come he you know how come he's so enigmatic or whatever you know and it really it really cracks me up because I was in the trenches for years okay I was around you know in the late 70s early 80s to me promoting was we didn't have computers we didn't even have cell phones okay we had to go home to make a call or to a pay phone all right and and you know I was in the city of Boston. There were a lot of good players there, and they were all looking for record deals. And these guys were all my customers. I was fixing all their broken junk, and they and and and, and if they had money, they'd buy an amp. But they usually didn't have money till they got signed. And they would come to me and say, "Friday night, man, at the channel, the record company's going to be there. This is real important to me." What would I do? Drag an amp over I'd there. I'd lug 